Yes, for those of you who uh, don't know me, um, thank you for letting me talk today at the Utah uh, Rare Plant Conference. I'm Jennifer Ackerfield. I'm the head curator of natural history collections at Denver Botanic Gardens. Um, I was previously at CSU where I just finished a PhD studying thistles. Um, so there you go. This I think <laughs> is my favorite quote about thistles, um, and in particular, anyone that has ever tried to identify a thistle in Utah, I think, uh, can identify with this. Um, thistles of Utah have long constituted one of the most difficult problems in the taxonomy of the state. So this is kind of what drove me to work on Circeum for my PhD. I wanted to resolve some of these taxonomic conflicts. Uh, in Utah, um, as you know, Thistles grow in a wide variety of habitats. We have Circeum onbii in hanging gardens, Circeum utonii in the alpine, uh, and Circeum mojavinci uh, in desert seeps. Um, unfortunately, one of the things that happens when you study thistles is you realize that people have a lot of you know, misconceptions about thistles, and this really derives from Canada thistle and its invasive properties. Uh, because of these misconceptions, something that I see here in Colorado when I go out hiking is often a destruction of native thistles in, in their habitat. And this is really sad and uh, something that I really try to, to help promote the importance of native thistles in the landscape to as many groups as possible because of this. Uh, because thistles are really important components of our landscape. Uh, they're important sources of food for many pollinators, even including this bat in a, a Mexican species. Uh, and in the Alpine, they serve as a source of food for pica. So what I did for uh, this research was I basically took uh, the treatment from the flora of North America, which recognized 62 species of Circeum, and I used this as the foundation for my hypothesis. So if we think about it, each species name is really just a hypothesis waiting to be tested. So I tested these hypotheses uh, using a combination of genetic data, morphological data, geographical and ecological data to really help inform which lineages represent species. Um, because as we all know, you can't conserve what you don't know is there. So effective conservation really relies on an accurate taxonomic classification. So the first group that I'm going to share with you is the Circeum etonii group. Um, this was the one that really captured my, you know, attention when I first started thinking about thistles in the 90s. Um, and this is mountaintop thistle. And we have a lot of mountaintop thistle here in Colorado. In Utah, there's one population in the LaSalle Mountains. Um, we also have seven different varieties of uh, Circeum etonii proposed in the floor of North America. I've highlighted the ones which occur in Utah. So they're subdivided by whether there are hairs on the involucral bracts of the heads, um, so we have like, for instance, variety Etonii with no hairs. And then we have variety Murdochii and varieties Areocephalum, which have hairy uh, bracts. So I'm going to show you uh, the phylogeny that I generated. Um, this was actually generated using next generation sequencing data. So it represents billions of base pairs of data. Uh, and I've highlighted all of the different lineages and color coded them corresponding to the different varieties or species that I'll be talking about. Uh, and then this actually just represents the North American clade. So all of Circeum in North America form a single clade. And so you can see where within this phylogeny for North American Circeum, all of these different species are positioned. Uh, so the first thing that you can uh, see from this result here <laughs> is that Circeum etonii was clearly not a single species. Uh, so then I had to go to work and figure out what the heck is actually happening here. Uh, so the very first thing that I did was I needed to identify which lineage 
actually corresponds to Circium etonii. So I identified the type, which is uh, in the mountains near Salt Lake City. Uh, these collections corresponded closest to that. And what I found is that uh, Circium etonii is probably restricted to Utah in distribution now. Uh, these mountains in northern Nevada, I'm still kind of working on those populations right there, but, but for right now, it appears that Circe Metonia is only found in Utah. All right, I, I had a previous data set where I included some additional samples that I wasn't able to include in this next generation set. And in this data set, I actually found a, another unique evolutionary lineage for Circeum etonii in uh, Utah that had been previously described as variety Harrisonii. Uh, it is very distinct morphologically with its darker involucral bracts. And so I decided that the best way to resolve this was to treat this as Circeum Harrisonii, which is now a new combination. Uh, Circeum Murdochii or Circeum Etonii variety Murdochii in Utah is only found here in uh, the northeastern corner, and it is uh, a unique evolutionary lineage from uh, its closely distributed Circeum Etonii, which is very interesting. Um, and so I have recommended that we elevate variety Murdochii to species status, and that these be recognized now as Circeum murdochii. Uh, what's really interesting about this Circeum too is that I found that it is uh, a sister, meaning that it shares a most common, a recent common ancestor uh, with this rare hanging garden species, Circeum ONBI. So there are a couple of things that could be going on here, uh, which I'll be investigating in the future. Um, now this one, uh, variety Viperinum, is only known from mountaintops in uh, Nevada currently, but I did uh, elevate this to species status as Circeum Viperinum based on these results here. And I really think that it could possibly be in the mountains of uh, Western Utah. And so it could uh, potentially be there. Um, there really aren't a lot of thistle collections from mountaintops in this area. Um, and then again, really interestingly, uh, I found that this alpine species, uh, Viperinum, is actually sister to Circeum joanni, which is only known from one hanging garden, maybe two hanging gardens, in Zion National Park. So again, I'm, I'm going to look at, you know, what's driving this diversification in a future uh, project. But one thing that I was able to determine is that Circeum joanni is a really uh, good species and actually wasn't closely related to the other hanging garden species, which is more common in Utah, Circeum ridbergii. Uh, as for Circeum etonii variety Areocephalum, uh, I recovered four distinct evolutionary lineages. Uh, this purple one here is Circeum scopulorum. This yellow one here is now a new species, Circeum funky. I don't know what's going on with this one yet. Uh, and then this lineage here is the most interesting for Utah because it is a new species. So this is the Circeum scopulorum that has long been reported for the mountains, uh, the LaSalle Mountains in Utah. Um, it is clearly not, not related <laughs> to the other Circeum scopulorum, uh, and it's also really morphologically distinct. I mean, this thing grows to 10 decimeters tall. Uh, it's just very morphologically distinct from any of the other variety areocephalums. Um, I think what's really fun is I went through and I looked through some old records of, uh, you know, specimens and letters of correspondence in relation to these specimens. And what I found uh, was a really interesting correspondence between R.J. Moore, who studied Circeum in the 60s, and Arthur Cronquist. And uh, Moore had sent Cronquist this, <laughs> this specimen here consisting of a single leaf and a single head asking Cronquist, what do you think the, the heck this thing is? And Cronquist was like, well, 
you know, I think it best fits this old specimen of Circium scopulorum that Rydberg took, but it could be an undescribed species. But in the present state of my knowledge or lack of knowledge of Circium, this is as far as I can go. Uh, so I think one really interesting thing for this too is at least three different people have sent me photographs of the LaSalle mountain thistle in the last year. Uh, so I'm actually actively working on describing this new species right now. Um, I'm open for suggestions as to name, but I'm thinking maybe uh, Circeum Walshii. All right, Circeum clavatum, the fish lake thistle. This is another one that is re was really perplexing, especially here in Colorado. Um, in uh, Utah, you only have variety clavatum, uh, where the type was actually taken in Fish Lake National Forest. Now, the, the confusion in Colorado and the Rocky Mountains really resulted from, uh, you know, just a, a, a different look at the taxonomy from different authors. So Rydberg in 1922, uh, you know, he recognized Herceum clavatum, but he also recognized these eight other different species. And then Harrington, when he wrote his manual of the plants of Colorado, he kind of like subsumed a lot of these together. And this is where the real confusion came in for Colorado was that Harrington erroneously included Circeum etonii. Okay. And then Weber and Whitman only recognized Circeum centauri for Colorado and again, continued to perpetuate the erroneous inclusion of Circeum etonii. So hence, so many specimens in the Rocky Mountains left misidentified for many years. All right, so what did I find here? Well, I actually found uh, that Circeum clavatum from Utah formed its own distinct evolutionary lineage from the uh, specimens that I collected here in Colorado. So Circeum clavatum is now limited to uh, Utah and distribution. It may be in Northern Arizona as well. I'm looking into that. Uh, as for Colorado, we now have re-established the Rydberg name of Circeum grisium to encompass, uh, you know, the variety clavatum and variety Osterhoodii that were found in Colorado. And that variety Americanum is actually now Circeum centauri. Uh, interestingly, I included some Circeum clavatum from the uh, Marking Tinsi <laughs> Plateau in uh, southern, Col or southern Utah, and these um, were kind of left unresolved, so I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on here with those, but they might represent uh, incipient speciation or even a new species. All right. Now, Circeum virginens, or the Virgin River thistle, uh, is a rare uh, species in Utah as a status of G2, uh, but was subsumed into Circeum mojavensi in the flora of North America treatment. Uh, this distribution map here shows the range of Circeum virginensi. You can see here it's centered around uh, the type locality, which is near St. George. And then these uh, collections here down in the Grand Canyon um, might actually represent a, a different species altogether. So what did I find? Um, well, what I found was that Circeum virginense and Circeum mohavens are actually uh, very closely related. Uh, they do share a most recent common ancestor, but they are morphologically distinct. Uh, one of the reasons that you don't really see this on a herbarium specimen is that a lot of the morphological uh, difference has to do with the, the basal leaves, which are actually very rarely collected in these specimens. Um, so we're actually increasing the sampling of both of these um, for a project that a student of mine is working on to really help resolve the relationships uh, and, and determine whether or not Circeum virginense should be treated as a separate taxon, maybe whether it should be treated as a variety or subspecies of Mojavens or even subsumed within Mojavens as well. But there is this other population here from the Grand Canyon that, uh, that you know, 
are is working on being described as a new species as well. So we're testing all of these hypotheses right now. Uh, should have some more answers by the next rare plant conference. So in summation, a lot of things are happening uh, with regards to taxonomy in Circium for Utah. Uh, Circium metonia again is now restricted to Utah. Um, maybe Nevada as well. Um, I am including more Nevada populations in my next round of sampling, so hoping to resolve that. Uh, Circium murdochii is now recognized from the Uintah Mountains and is a separate taxonomic you know, entity from Circium etonii. Um, and that variety Harrisonii, again, is now recognized as Circium Harrisonii from the Tushar Mountains. Uh, we should look for mountain peak or Circium viperinum on mountain peaks in Western Utah. This would be a fun thing for people, you know, that are going to that part of the state. You know, if you want to hike to the top of these mountains and send me photos, I'd be happy to take a look at those and see if they do correspond to Circium viperinum. Uh, Circium clavatum is now restricted to Utah, maybe Northern Arizona in distribution, but definitely not in Colorado. Uh, the rare hanging garden species Circium joanne is a good species, not closely related to Circium rydbergii at all. And then I think this was the most uh, fun find was that uh, the Circium from the LaSalle Mountains that has long gone by Circium scopularum is actually a new species. So, oh, and then I'm still looking at virginins and mohavins. Ah, oh, so all of this work, uh, you know, took, took a lot of um, different uh, people to help me with. I had a lot of collaborators. Uh, uh, that helped me with sampling and with analyses, with laboratory assistance. Um, and I'd really like to thank the Utah Native Plant Society for assistance with funding of this project, uh, all of the herbaria that supplied samples. And I, I did get some of these photographs from other people who are listed here as well. And with that, this will be done. And if you have any more information or if you have any questions, uh, about thistles that we can't answer right now, feel free to email me at the uh, email address listed here. And this is my, this is my friend Wendy Hodgson in the 80s surveying Circium Rydbergii in Dark Canyon, Utah.